as you know, anything on back, if you're doing high reps, it's probably gonna be painful. So let's see if we can get a tense 200 rep back workout in. All right, so we started with an incline dumbbell row. You know, I really would have loved to have done a, a one arm barbell row or Meadows row, but 25 reps, 50 reps in a row for two sets is a lot for lower back. So we use an incline dumbbell row. And um, these, uh, I've always felt like, even, if you're even though you're keeping your elbows tight and it's a lot of lat, uh, just uh, opening your rhomboids and traps up, this hits the middle of your back really well. So when you do this, yeah, it's a little lat, but you're gonna feel a lot in the middle of your back just from the position that you're in mechanically. So, incline dumbbell row. Uh, this was tough, but two sets of 25 right here to get us started. Uh, the other thing I, I wanted to mention was I did use straps. Anytime you're talking about high reps, you're running that chance that your forearms are gonna start burning, your biceps are burning, and you really want to drive with your elbows. I mean, that's really the key to back work is driving with your elbows. So don't be afraid to use straps on this so you can really drive with your elbows and minimize your grip on this as well. Okay, second exercise. So, well, first of all, before I get to that, so I like to start off with a row. We start off with a row, but now you want to kind of give your arms a break. So we moved to a straight arm pull down uh, for lats. Now we use two ropes, as you can see in the video. The dual ropes is a game changer on this exercise. If you look back at how much more shoulder extension I get, I'm getting my hands back further, more lat contraction. Um, these feel amazing. If you don't have two, two ropes, that's fine. You can use one rope. Or you can even use uh, a bar of some court sort. But, but anyway, so you, you, you follow up the row with something that's less intense on your biceps. So this is zero biceps. So you, you can really isolate your back a little bit better. So this uh, is your second movement. Again, two sets of 25. This is very similar to biceps. You remember when we were doing biceps when I said, it's not that you can't do the reps, you just have to be able to work through the pain. There's a lot of burning associated with this, a lot of pain, you just gotta work through it. Well, this is the same way. This exercise started burning, you know, 12, 13 reps. My back was on fire and you just have to keep on going so you make it all the way to 25. So make sure you get all 25 reps in on both sets. And make sure you work through that burn. Okay, next up, we've got your arms rested up. We've already done our horizontal rowing. Let's do some vertical pulling. So we're doing a pull down, a narrow grip pull down with spongy grips. You know I love spongy grips. And you're keeping your elbows in tight. Drive with your elbows, drive down with your elbows. Don't pull with your arms. Remember, elbows and angles, that's the key to back training. So uh, close grip, um, you can do, you can change your hand position to whatever you think feels best. So in other words, you could use a neutral grip, palms facing each other. You could kind of supinate a little bit as you drive your elbows down or really you can even pronate. It's just gonna hit different areas of your back. So if you're pronated, meaning your palms facing forward, you'll probably get a little bit more teres and upper lats. Uh, whereas if you kind of supinate, you'll probably get a little bit more of the belly of the lat. But um, they're all good angles. It just depends on what you wanna hit. So real strict, 25 reps here. Now the weight's not gonna be real heavy for you to do 25, so you're not gonna get a big stretch, but that's okay. Work really hard on those contractions. Side note, if you don't have the spongy grips, I know not every gym has them, you could even use a regular bar. You could use a regular pull down bar. You could use a parallel grip, again, with your palms facing each other. So the, the theme here is just a vertical pull. So whether that's done with spongy grips or a, a straight bar, whatever bar, any of that's fine. Just remember it's a vertical pull, that's all. Okay, ooh, this last one was tough. We did deficits, uh, just standing on a plate, so you're in a deficit deadlift shrugs dead shrugs whatever you want to call them so it's a deficit deadlift with a shrug added on to the top 25 there is brutal so if you think about what we did first we did that row we got a lot of mid back we got some lats uh, then we moved on to the straight arm pull down we got more lats then we moved to the narrow grip pull down we got even more lats but the things that we did the thing we didn't really hit was kind of the top of your traps and um, your upper traps and then your spinal erectors. So this is an exercise to, to kill two birds with one stone. So this way we could get our traps, we get our uh, spinal erectors, uh, and honestly, you get your cardio in. <laughs> 20, so 25 reps here, it feels like cardio too. You feel your lungs burning. So again, done on the deficit. 
If you've never done something on a deficit, just be careful. It's a, it's a really extreme range of motion. You know, I, I did these in the powerlifting days, so you know, I, I've done these before. But um, that's really it. Two sets of 25 here. Your entire back should be really pumped up right now. I don't personally like to train in this kind of rep range for a long period of time because, again, if you're using sets of 25, that means the weight has to be lighter. That's fine, but if you're using lighter weights to get full activation, get all your muscle fibers firing, you're going to have to get near failure. Now, that sounds easy on a surface, but the reality is, is in order to get to failure with lighter weights, you got to work through the burn. You know how bad something burns? And a lot of people just can't do that. They just stop, it burns. You gotta keep on going through it until you get to failure. So mentally it's really tough for people to do this on a consistent basis. What I think is good is when your joints need a break, you can lighten up the weight and you just wanna do something different, stimulate different if you're looking for a crazy pump. Um, so I think it's good to intersperse in there for periods of time, but I wouldn't do this week after week for months on end. That wouldn't be my recommendation.